Okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so every, everyone's ready to go. Ready to go. Okay, well, bear with me. This is my first quiz. Yeah. <coughs> uh, I need to change this so that my mouse is cooperating. Okay, here we go. This is all about Charlie Pride. So I tried to tie it in a little bit with what we have been doing and what we've been learning about, but it's, it's still unique. So three, two, one, go. Question one, Charlie Pride was born in 1934 to sharecropper parents. What is sharecropping? A, you owned land, rented a portion out. B, you rented land, paid for it with a portion of the crop. C, you owned land and rented it out to someone else. Or D, you rented land and kept the whole crop for yourself. Now you've got five minutes to, to answer, so you don't need to jump at it. But if you know the answer and you answer right away, then you get more points. So take all mm -hmm. the time uh, you need to Google and... Um, did everyone get a, a link? Wait, to wait, wait. Other we device? can all Google. I thought we just had to do oh, it from yeah. memory. No, no, this is a, they're all open book faith. We're here to learn. Our so. our news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you do get more points if you answer correctly more quickly than everyone else, but you do have time to vote. This feels like a test. I feel very weird. I feel like I'm, <laughs> I'm back in school. Well, school's the key point. We're all learning. I learned so much putting this together. Marcia's Marcia trying to call me. One, one, two, and three, did you four, find five, that uh, coming up with wrong answers that are <laughs> is the hardest part? That is part? so hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so I guess at, at six votes, all the votes are in. Mm -hmm. And the correct answer is B. You rented land and paid for it with a portion of the crop. So we have five correct, one incorrect. Um, Good job. Something can you I get, learned. Can you was, guess who the correct one was? <laughs> so I've noted here at the end of the Civil War in 1865, uh, General Sherman instituted the it, it was a policy called four acres and a mule. So all the freed slaves would be able to work their own land after years of servitude. Unfortunately, it was a very small portion were able to take advantage of that policy, but Light. it was well intended. Come on, stop it. Okay, question two. Okay, just don't I'll come back up and That's okay. Oh, off to Google. No, no. Busy doing other stuff. Charlie Pride's first love was baseball. What was the name of the first team for which he played? Was it the Boise Yankees, the Missoula Timberjacks, the Louisville Clippers, or the Memphis Red Sox? Okay, everybody guessed correctly. It was the Memphis Red Sox. Uh, fun fact, when Charlie Pride got out of the army, the first thing he did was move to East Helena, Montana. He played for the East Helena Smelterites and uh, the, the, uh, the copper mine kept 18 employment spots open in their business for people specifically playing baseball. So they paid each of them $10 a game, but ensured their employment as well. For Charlie Pride, the manager knew he could sing. He paid him an extra $10 on top of 
what he was being played to pay base, play baseball uh, so that he would sing for 15 minutes before each game to bring people in. And it worked. Okay, question three. Charlie's first Grammy win was in 1967 for which song? Kalija, Just Between You and Me, Kiss an Angel Good Morning, or Is Anybody Going to San Antonio? Kalija's playing in my background right now. Sorry about all the noise. There's all kinds of drama happening at my place. My, my kid just got home from work, so. Okay, <clears throat> all the votes are in. The, an the correct answer was just between you and me. Oops. Um, when RCA executive and musician Chet Atkins signed Charlie in 1965, two years after he moved to Nashville, the company didn't send out his promotional photo along with his first singles because there were people, disc jockeys refusing to play his music because he was black. Question four. Where did Charlie play his first big concert? Olympia Stadium, Detroit, United Center, Chicago, Capital One Arena, Washington, or Madison Square Garden, New York? <laughs> Everyone got the correct answer. It was Olympia Stadium, Detroit. <laughs> so what happened was uh, they didn't send any information out with the concert information. So, so no one knew when they got to the concert that he was black. And they only discovered it when he got out onto the stage. No way. Oh, yes. Yeah. So there was this huge applause, and then he walked out onto the stage, and it just kind of died off because everyone was in shock. And so the, the first thing he said was, I knew I'd have to get it over with sooner or later. I told the audience, friends, I realize it's a little unique, me coming out here with a permanent suntan to sing country and western to you, but that's the way it is.
there were people in the in the audience saying oh, it's true it's true because they'd heard he was black but didn't believe it yeah okay question five as a young boy charlie won an award in 4-h what was it for public speaking volunteer of the year mimicking the sounds of animals or his prize calf Anybody else a member of 4-H, like me? Aaron, yeah. <laughs> I started out in home ec. I went to beef and back to home ec. Head, heart, health, and hands. There was cooking. And then my mom taught ceramics part of like a secondary course in it too, so. That was always fun. Actually, it's kind of funny. I was cleaning out some drawers today and dad had given me some t-shirts, some commemorative t-shirts a while back of the old 4-H club in Belmont. So found that in my drawer today, which is interesting. Gone to three websites and none of them mentioned 4-H ever. <laughs> I, I wondered I if I a wild guess. I wondered if I wasn't making this a little difficult to find, but I uh, I was having get, getting such a kick out of all of his interviews and all the information. Yeah. I would lie. I, I mean, if I can find it, you can find it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And I mean, this th this one hit personal for me because I was also in 4-H, mm -hmm. but uh, I kind of wish I could read you my, my notes while you're while you're searching for your answers, but they kind of give it away. <laughs> Finally found the correct answer, but it's too late, I already picked one. Oh, well, now you learned. <laughs> Faith, are you still producing over Christmas? Um, that's a good question. Thank you for asking. <laughs> I think I think we're off air on the twenty fifth, um, but so we're we're on all next week except for Friday, and then and then we're back the, the following week. Okay. Fifty seconds left. Yep, I was just gonna say less than a minute to go. We're still. <laughs> Still a one vote. This is uh, it. Okay, quick, quick, quick. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, we're done. The correct answer was mimic mimic mimicking the sounds of animals, which show us the standings, Jen. Funny. Pardon me. Uh, sorry to talk over you. Can you show us the standings? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. I was just going to let you know that uh, as a sidebar to this, um, he had a knack for mimicking anything. Uh, sounds of animals got him an award in 4-H, but he could also do accents. And so when he was sitting around the house singing, most of his family thought he was just pretending. <laughs> uh, there you go, kids. Hey, thanks, Jen. Okay. Drea. Let's see this. Oh, Drea. Wow. Back. Yeah, Mike's Mike's right behind you. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we have question six and oh okay, six, seven, eight, and nine is the lightning round. Forgot to mention that. So the last question is the lightning one. Double the points, right? Double points. Yeah, I'm um, yeah. Double the points, but there's no time. Oh, sorry, new question. Okay, go. <laughs> oh, did I I didn't hit it. Oh, okay. Something happened on my screen. Yeah. So lightning round means you, you get double points, but there's no time. So you don't even get to Google. You just have to go with fastest, your... fastest gets it. Yeah. Okay. Question six. Which of these incidents of racism happened to Charlie Pride? He was refused service at a restaurant. A realtor refused to show, refused to show him a show home. He was called a super N word or D all of the above. <clears throat> okay, everyone has voted. It was in fact D, all of the above. Uh, Charlie's wife did say that for all of those, oh, sorry, for being refused service at a restaurant and being refused to show a home they were, they were trying to buy. That was in, I, I think it was in Montana. Um, they didn't think it was that big of a deal because the native Indians in the area were being treated way worse. Uh, also worth noting, it, uh, the person who called him a super N-word was Willie Nelson. They were good friends and Charlie considered it a term of endearment at the time. I'm, I'm sure he always did, but he, when, when uh, Darius Rucker, as a matter of fact, who was a big fan and they were close friends, um, he asked him about Willie Nelson having called him that. Uh, he said, yeah, he, he, he called me that, but look at this. And it was a picture of Willie, uh, a publicity photo of Willie with Charlie and Willie called Charlie the next number one country singer. So they were really good friends. It was, it was back in the day when it wasn't as big a deal, I guess. But uh, Charlie forgave him that. Question seven. Which of Charlie's songs was credited for bringing an end to the touring concert band in the UK and Ireland? Was it Roll On Mississippi, Honky Tonk Blues, Crystal Chandeliers, or you win again.
all six votes in. Um, <clears throat> this was during a time that was called the Troubles, which was a low-level war from the late 60s till the late 90s. Um, the main issue was uh, constitutional Northern Ireland. Unionists wanted Northern Ireland to remain UK. Irish nationalists wanted Northern Ireland to leave the UK and join a united Ireland. But because all of that was going on, uh, no musicians wanted to play, no sports teams wanted to play there. And Charlie Pride was the first one to just say, okay, let's just go. And he agreed to play there in Belfast in 1976 and basically put an end to all of that. Hmm. Pretty brave. What was the right answer? Oh, I'm sorry. It was Crystal Chandeliers. Oh, I got that wrong. I gave up. I broke my own rule. <laughs> they actually considered the, the entire uh, Belfast considered it a unity song. Oh, okay. it, it brought a, a whole bunch of people together. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, question eight. Charlie sang at which US president's inauguration? Jimmy Carter, Ronald Reagan, Richard Nixon, or George H.W. Bush?
Okay. <clears throat> All votes are in. The correct answer was Ronald Reagan. Whew. Good. <laughs> Uh, well, he was he, telling me Trump for some stupid reason. Yeah. <laughs> Obama, oh, I knew that, that was wrong. Yeah. Obama kept coming for me, but I I saw something with a picture of Reagan in some sort of uh, Library of Congress website, so I went with that just just on the picture. The the whole Reagan 1981 inauguration had to have been one of the best because uh, with all of the the names that came up when I was trying to find out what songs he sang, Charlie sang. Uh, not, nothing I found told me what he sang. Um, he sang with Mel Tillis, another personal favorite, um, but I couldn't, couldn't find out which exact songs he sang, but he did stop singing at one point and say that it's a privilege and an honor to be here. A guy from the Delta of Mississippi, I thank you, Ms. Nancy, for inviting me. Which I thought was pretty cool. Who's winning? Who's winning? Not me. <laughs> Let's see here. Long oh, ways to go to the party. Drea. Huge lead. Huge. Yeah. yeah, but I always do the lightning round, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Anyone can win at the end. Oops. Well, and yes, so I will take those off the screen. <laughs> and here we go, kids. Lightning round. It's a fun one. For which type of baseball pitch was Charlie most known? Knuckleball, curveball, change up, or slider? <laughs> wow. See, I can see your I can see your votes coming in in real time. You've all voted. And the correct answer is curveball. I feel like we just needed to choose the the one color that was different from all the other colors. <laughs> How did I not see that? Is that, that a, is that the secret? Yeah, Faith caught on to that quick. It's been like that. I, I really didn't want to choose that. I thought, no, it can't be that easy. <laughs> you know, okay. He had an injury that affected his fastball that moved him from the, the um, Negro Pro League to the minors. Oh, really? That's correct. Interesting. Yeah. That is correct. He had, and he took a, a one last ditch effort to uh, try out for the Mets in Florida. He had his name stenciled on a bunch of bats and sent ahead. So then when he showed up, they, he thought that when he showed up, they would just let him try out, and they didn't. They saw through him and, and sent him away. And that's what sent him into his, uh, his music career, mm -hmm. trying out for the Mets and being turned away. Good job, everybody. Ooh, Rankings. Mike? Wow! <laughs> what? What? My! No, 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 no. It's rigged. I'm sure it's rigged somehow because I didn't. What just happened? It's a lightning round. That's 19 points difference. Wow! Is that close? That eh? is insane. <laughs> How the lightning round? Oh, okay. But I mean, that's uh, that's crazy. Well done, Mike. There's only 78 yeah. points difference from, from first to last, though. I mean, you guys... Really? Are, okay. Hold on. Banana's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 705 to 718. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> well, Insane. I've never won before. <laughs> Whoa. I've first never been time. able to play before. So this is... Because uh, I always write the quiz. Jim did all the heavy lifting this time. So thank you for that, Well, well done. Mike. That, well you know done. what? 
so much fun, learned so much about someone I've listened to my literally my entire life. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I, I channeled him while I was doing the quiz. I had the music playing the whole time, singing along. It was it was fantastic. Yeah. All righty. Well, that was fun. Thanks, everybody. Mm -hmm. And welcome to Winnipeg, Faith. Thanks very much, Mike. It's very nice to see real people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it must be strange coming to a new city and not, not being able to meet anyone. It's, yeah, it's, it's so odd. Um, yeah, if any of you have any suggestions on things to do in a COVID, COVID safe times or in, in during COVID times, please send me a DM. I would be, um, I'd be happy to, to try it out. I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out what uh, what what this place is like, and mm -hmm. the the one thing that I've sort of experienced is that this overwhelming sense of community. So it's it's making me feel very much at home, even though we're in COVID time. So we do have yeah. that. Yeah. Have a good night, everybody. This was fun. Thank you for inviting me, and I'm looking forward to the next one. This will be so much yeah. fun. Well, the next one uh, we're going to get be getting back into African American history. We're about we're about halfway through. We're a couple quizzes away from uh, civil rights movement, and. Uh, when we're done that, we're going to look at uh, First Nations uh, histories because we're a lot of Winnipeggers here. So um, nice to meet all of you. Yeah. Have a good night. Stay safe. Yeah. Stay Thanks, safe, Mary. everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. holidays, everybody. Night. Happy holidays. Night.